very warm welcome to the news on Sunset TV. I'm Isha Shah. This Saturday night, we'll cover the top national and international developments of the day. Let's begin right away with the headlines. Bhupin Rabhai Patel to take oath as Chief Minister of Gujarat on Monday meets Governor to stake claim to form the government for the second time. Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu to be the new Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh will take oath on Sunday. Mukesh Agnihotri to be Deputy Chief Minister. Sensitivity and sympathy key to promoting human rights says President Draupadi Murmu in her address on the 74th Human Rights Day emphasizes need to ensure justice for all. Mercury drops after snowfall in higher reaches of Kashmir. Cyclone Mandus weakens after crossing Tamil Nadu coast, four killed by falling of trees and electric poles. And Team India beat Bangladesh in the last ODI. Ishan Kishan creates history by scoring fastest double century. Virat Kohli also scores a century. And let's take a look now at our Flash News segment. India abstains from voting in UN Security Council on resolution that exempts humanitarian aid efforts from sanctions, cites instances of terrorist groups using them as means to evade sanctions. Prime Minister Modi to visit Maharashtra and Goa on Sunday, Prime Minister to lay the foundation stone for National Institute for One Health in Nagpur. 535 railway stations covered with 572 one station, one product outlets, states Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav in Rajya Sabha. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar participates in Kashi Tamil Sangamam in Varanasi, calls India's presidency of G20 a matter of pride. ED attaches properties worth over 152 crore rupees belonging to Soumya Chaurasia, Deputy Secretary to Chhattisgarh Chief Minister and others in alleged coal levy scam. Prime Minister Modi expresses grief over the demise of Marathi Lavani singer Sulojana Tai Chavan, lauds her role in promoting the culture of Maharashtra. United States honors garment maker Gap One with the Corporate Excellence Award for relief work during the COVID pandemic in India. Veteran sprinter P.T. Usha elected the first woman president of the Indian Olympic Association. India wins eight medals, including three gold medals in eight junior Wushu World Championships in Indonesia. And double century by Ishan Kishan and century by Virat Kohli helps India register the fourth highest score of 409 for 8 in ODIs against Bangladesh. Our top story Bhupendra Bhai Patel will be the new Chief Minister of Gujarat. He met the Governor on Saturday and staked claim to form the government. Earlier, he was elected as the leader of the Legislative Party in the presence of party observers and senior leaders Rajnath Singh, Arjun Munda and B.S. Yadri Rappa. Patel's name was proposed by party legislator and senior leader Kanu Desai in a meeting of party legislators at the party office in Gandhinagar. MLA's Manisha Bain Vakil, Raman Patkar Shankar Chaudhary and Purnesh Modi supported his candidature. This will be Bhubendra Bhai Patel's second consecutive term as Chief Minister. The party had projected him as the chief ministerial candidate during the election campaign. Manya Narendra Bhai na netrutwa ne ane Bharati Janata Party na bharosa ne Gujarat e phari thi Manya Narendra Bhai ni je vikas ni raj niti chhe any upar Gujarat ni janta e phari mohal lagadi chhe अने जी मान्य नरेंद्र भाई ने संकल्प छे के गुजरात ने विकसित जे देशों छे ऐनी हरोड़ माले ही जाऊँ छे। On Saturday, Gujarat Unit BJP Chief C R Patel accompanied Bhupendra Bhai Patel to the Raj Bhavan 
han handed over the letter to the governor staking the claim to form the government. Patel will be taking oath as the 18th Chief Minister of the State on Monday at the Helipad ground near the new Secretariat in Gandhinagar. Now Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu will be sworn in as the new Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh on Sunday. The swearing-in ceremony will be held in Shimla at 11 a.m. The Congress Legislative Party approved his name for the top post in the state. It also named Mukesh Agnihotri as the Deputy Chief Minister. Himachal Pradesh Congress in charge Rajiv Shukla, Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel, Himachal Pradesh Congress Chief Pratibha Singh and other leaders were also present at the meeting. On Friday, the newly elected Congress MLAs met in Shimla, passing a unanimous resolution authorizing the party president to elect their leader. हिमाचल की जनता का जिन्होंने हिमाचल प्रदेश में कांग्रेस पार्टी की सरकार लाई है जो वादे हिमाचल की जनता से हमने किए हैं उन वादों को अक्षरक्ष लागू करने का दायित्व और जवाबदेही मेरी है इस दृष्टिकोण से भी हमें आगे आप आगे जो चुनौतियां हैं उनका सामना करना है एक बात हमने कही थी हम सत्ता सत्ता के लिए नहीं चाहते हैं हम सत्ता व्यवस्था परिवर्तन के लिए लाए हैं now, President Draupadi Murmu has stressed the need to spread the concept of justice among all. She underlined sensitivity and compassion as the key to promoting human rights. The President said that if we put ourselves in the shoes of the downtrodden, it will open our eyes and compel us to do the right thing. President Murmu was addressing the 74th Human Rights Day function in New Delhi. She underscored that the golden rule is to do unto others the way you wish to be treated. Let's listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact remains that human rights are a work in progress around the world. At home, however, we can take solace in the fact that the National Human Rights Commission has been making the best possible efforts to spread awareness about them. Now, in its 30th year, the NRH, NHRC has done a commendable job of protecting as well as promoting human rights. Moving on now, Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur described the POCSO Act in 2012 as an important development in the history of child rights in the country. Addressing a stakeholders conference on the POCSO Act that aims to protect children from sexual offences in New Delhi, he said that the act is the first step towards providing justice to the victims' families, but people still hesitate to file police complaints. Let's listen in. The increase in the POCSO courts and in the number of public prosecutors must be matched by specialized training and attendant court infrastructure. Very often when we have special legislation, we increase the number of courts, we increase the number of judicial officers, but that in itself is not going to be adequate unless particularly an area as sensitive as this, we attend to other infrastructural issues including psychological support and counselling and expert care within the precincts of the courtroom. Addressing the event, Union Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Irani said that the government has set up more than 1,000 fast-track courts with the help of the Nirbhaya Fund. She stated that 300 fast-track courts are dedicated for cases related to children and the POCSO Act. My request today to the stakeholders and the Honorable Justices is, can you tell us, infrastructurally, what more can be done by the Ministry of Child Development so that we can ensure we partner with the justice system in our country to expedite solutions for our children? One of the prime agenda the Justice Bhatt has pronounced to me is the need for restoration. But that need cannot be fulfilled if justice is denied or delayed. All right, so moving on now, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Billa on Saturday said that Maharana Pratap will forever remain a source of inspiration for the youth for his remarkable courage, 
bravery and sacrifice to protect and defend the nation's self-respect. The Speaker of the Lok Sabha was addressing a program organized by Maharana Pratap Shiksha Parishad in Gorakhpur. Appreciating the Founders Week celebrations by Maharana Pratap Education Council, the Lok Sabha Speaker said that such competitions not only improve the students' knowledge but also develop good values and patriotism. Let's listen in. सारे महान व्यक्तित्व जिन्होंने उस समय नौजवानों की पीढ़ी को प्रेरणा दी आज भी हमारे लिए प्रेरणा स्रोत हैं स्वामी विवेकानंद हो मदन मोहन मालवीय हो मन दिग्विजनाथ हो इन सब ने कहीं ना कहीं भारत के नौजवानों को एक दिशा दी एक मार्गदर्शन दिया और इसीलिए हम हमारी विरासत को भी याद करें वर्तमान में और भविष्य के अंदर एक नए भारत बनाने के संकल्प को पूरा करें Now cyclonic storm Mandos weakened into a deep depression after crossing the Mamlapuram coast. It is gradually expected to weaken and turn into a low pressure formation. The cyclone triggered strong winds and heavy rains in the city and its surrounding areas due to which many trees were uprooted. Five deaths were reported while over 9000 people were shifted to over 205 relief centers. Vehicular movement was also affected. 30 domestic and international flights were cancelled in the morning due to the cyclone. The airport's runway was also closed for some time. Nine flights departing from Chennai were cancelled, while 21 arriving flights were diverted to other cities. And let's take a look now at some more news from across the nation. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone and inaugurate projects worth 75,000 crore rupees in Nagpur on Sunday. He will also flag off the Vande Bharat Express running between Nagpur to Bilaspur. The first phase of Nagpur Metro will also be started. India on Friday abstained from voting in the UN Security Council on a resolution that seeks to keep humanitarian aid out of the purview of all UN sanctions. The remaining 14 members of the council voted in favor of the resolution. India cited instances of terror organizations in the neighborhood reincarnating as humanitarian aid and civil rights groups to escape sanctions while remaining engaged in terrorist activities. The Supreme Court will hear on 13th of December a petition filed by 2002 Gujarat riots victim Bilkis Banu who has challenged the state government's remit of 11 convicts in the case. 210 new cases of COVID-19 were reported in the country on a day and the number of patients under treatment further reduced to 4,047. A rocket-propelled grenade was allegedly hurled at a police station in Punjab's border district of Tarn Taran. In May, A rocket propelled grenade was thrown at the intelligence headquarters of the Punjab police in Mohali. After snowfall for the second day in a row in the higher reaches of Kashmir, minimum temperature recorded a rise and remained above the freezing point at most places in North India. The passing out parade took place today at the Indian Military Academy in Dehradun. A total of 344 cadets including 30 foreign cadets were commissioned as officers today. And time now for a very short break in the bulletin. Lots more coming up on the other side. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. Let's take a look now at some top stories from across the world. Chinese President Xi Jinping told Gulf Arab leaders on Friday that China will work to buy oil and gas in yuan, a move that would support Beijing's goal to establish its currency internationally and weaken the US dollar's grip on world trade. The move marks a new and significant development in the emerging world order. Let's find out more.
In Riyadh, Saudi Arabia Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman hosted two Arab summits with Chinese President Xi Jinping. The meetings clearly indicated the powerful prince's intentions seeking partnerships beyond the close historic ties with the West. Both top oil exporter Saudi Arabia and economic giant China sent strong messages during Xi's visit on non-interference. It comes at a time when Riyadh's relationship with Washington has been tested over human rights, energy policy and Russia. Any move by Saudi Arabia to replace the dollar in its oil trade is being seen as a quantum shift politically that Riyadh had previously threatened in the face of possible US legislation exposing OPEC members to antitrust lawsuits. Xi Jinping has been greeted with pomp and ceremony during his visit in which he attended a wider summit with leaders of Arab League countries spanning the Gulf, Levant and Africa. At the start of Friday's talks, Prince Mohammed heralded a historic new phase of relations with China. Though Saudi Arabia and China signed several strategic and economic partnership deals, analysts said relations would remain anchored mostly by energy interests. Saudi Arabia agreed to a MOU with Huawei this week on cloud computing and building high-tech complexes in Saudi cities. Riyadh is a top oil supplier to China and the two countries reaffirmed in a joint statement the importance of global market stability and energy collaboration while striving to enhance cooperation in peaceful nuclear power. She said Beijing would continue to import large quantities of oil from Gulf Arab countries and expand imports of liquefied natural gas. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. All right, now China has relaxed its COVID restrictions, but the streets in its cities continue to be deserted over fears of a resurgence of the pandemic. Experts have also warned that there could be a rise in the COVID-19 cases if the exit is too hasty. Let's take a look at this report. Streets were largely empty and shopping malls deserted in Beijing on Saturday as residents cautiously greeted a relaxation of lockdown measures by authorities this week. Although the government on Wednesday loosened key parts of its strict zero-COVID policy that has kept the pandemic largely at bay for the past three years, many people appear wary of being too quick to shake off the shackles. Little more than a month after the National Health Commission stressed commitment to its strict virus containment policy, saying it was putting people and lives first, authorities have changed track and are now telling people they have less to fear. Chinese epidemiologists say that 99% of people now infected with the virus would recover in 7 to 10 days. But there are signs that reassuring new message has still to convince many of the country's 1.4 billion people. Amid the caution, state broadcaster CCTV announced further easing, with tourism and entertainment venues, including theatres, libraries, internet cafes and table game centres, no longer requiring COVID tests and health codes. China's tally of 5,235 COVID-related deaths is a tiny fraction of its population of 1.4 billion and extremely low by global standards. Some experts have warned that toll could rise above 1.5 million if the exit is too hasty. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And let's take a quick look now at our World Wrap segment. On the International Anti-Corruption Day this year, the United States imposed sanctions on a broad array of people and companies around the world for corruption and human rights abuses. The offences range from illegal fish fishing operations in Chinese waters to kickbacks in Guatemala. The 15-member Russian Elections Commission is among those sanctioned by the United States for corruption and human rights abuses. The sanctions impact over 65 individuals and entities in 17 countries. Thousands attended a rally in Dhaka led by the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, the country's main opposition party, on Saturday, demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The demonstrators, mainly supporters of BNP, blamed Hasina for soaring fuel prices and rising cost of living and demanded that she step down to pave way for new elections under a caretaker government, according to media reports. General elections are not due until the end of next year. A Pakistani court dismissed former Prime Minister Imran Khan's petition in a six-year-old defamation case filed against him by incumbent Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. Khan had challenged the Lahore Session Court's decision in the Lahore High Court 
regarding depriving him of his right to respond in the 10 billion Pakistani rupees case filed against him by Shabazz Sharif. Japan and Australia held security talks of their foreign and defence ministers in Tokyo on Friday to discuss further deepening of military ties between the two countries. The meeting was held after Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and his Australian counterpart signed a new bilateral security agreement in October. Pro-democracy media tycoon Jimmy Lai was sentenced to five years and nine months in prison over two fraud charges linked to lease violations in Hong Kong on Saturday. Jimmy Lai was arrested during a crackdown on the city's pro-democracy movement following widespread protests in 2019 and under the national security law imposed by Beijing. And time now for a quick look at the most interesting developments in the world of sports. Morocco is facing Portugal in the FIFA World Cup football tonight. England is taking on France in the other quarter-final encounter. On Friday, Argentina and Croatia went through to the semi-finals of the FIFA World Cup. In the second quarter-final match, Argentina beat Netherlands 4-3 in a penalty shootout. Argentina's Molina scored the first goal in the 35th minute. Later, Messi scored another goal by converting a penalty. Netherlands managed to reduce the lead in the 83rd minute. But neither team scored in extra time and the match was decided by a penalty shootout. And in the first quarter-final match, Croatia beat five-time world champions Brazil 4-2 in a penalty shootout. The match ended in a goalless draw in the stipulated 90 minutes. In extra time, both teams scored one goal each. Now, India on Saturday defeated Bangladesh by 227 runs in the third and final ODI in Chattogram on Saturday. Chasing a mammoth target of 410 to win, the Bangladeshi team was all out for just 182 runs. The captain and Shakib Al-Hassan tried in vain to steady the innings after the early dismissal of the opener. Earlier, batting first, Indian opener Ishan Kishan scored the fastest double century in one-day internationals. He put up 210 runs in just 131 balls with the help of 24 fours and 10 sixes. His double century came in just 126 balls. Ishan had a 290-run stand in 190 balls for the second wicket with former captain Virat Kohli in the last match of their three-match ODI series against Bangladesh. Kohli made 113 runs in 91 balls with 11 fours and two sixes. And with that, it's a wrap of the bulletin this weekend. Keep watching Sunset TV for more news and updates. Do also share your feedback with us on our social media platforms. Thank you for being here. Good night.